bundling. There's something powerful about that. You know, all other religions, they have gods that did not rise again. This is the only one that said, look, death cannot hold me. I, nothing holds me back. I, I created everything. I even created Lucifer who became Satan. So nothing, nothing, there's nothing that I can't do. And the fact that he would die for us, there's something special about that. I mean, if you believe that, you know, the world just created a big bang and everything just kind of just kind of fell into order and your great great grandparents is an ape. Good for you. But I believe that God designed us. He had a perfect mission for us. He had a plan for us. And he took the time to say, you know what? I am going to create Brother Melvin. You know, I, I, I am going to create Papa J. You know, I, there's something that I have for Sister Adrian to do. I, it, just, it does something to me to know that he took time to, to say who I was and to create us. And I, I, that just does something for me. So I, I just thank you all for being here tonight so you can hear what God has given me to give to you. Pastor, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to stand before your people. I do not count it a small thing. It is big to trust somebody with your flock. And I'm just thankful that I'm here to be able to deliver the word that God has for us tonight. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to serve you. Thank you for bringing us here tonight without hurt, harm, or danger. Many of us have had to come from work and pick up kids and do all kinds of things and rearrange our world so that we could be here tonight. Father, you say that you are a rewarder of them who diligently seek you. Well, Father, that is what we are doing tonight. We are diligently seeking you, and we open our arms to receive all the rewards that you have for us for seeking after you. It's not about the rewards. It's about the relationship. And, Father, we love you, and we praise you, and we lift you up, and we magnify your name. And, Father, as we go to your word tonight, our prayer is that you open up our minds and our hearts so that we can receive what thus says the Lord, that we can actually be doers of the word, and not just hearers only. Allow us to apply this word in our life so that our lives will never be the same. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus, the name above all names, amen. 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 Let's say our statement of faith. This is my Bible. It is the word of truth. I can do. I messed y'all. Yeah, you got to be ready, right? <laughs> I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can. I'm a believer and not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hearer. I am humble before the Lord. I am obedient in the Lord. And I am mature in the Lord. I am enthusiastic about the Lord. I know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Amen. If you would, turn with me in your Bible to the book of Jeremiah. Amen. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, starting at verse 4. Jeremiah, chapter 1, starting at verse 4. And it reads, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. Then I said, ah, Lord, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. I'm too young to do this. But the Lord said to me, do not say, I am a youth. For you shall go to all whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces. People will look at you twisted sometimes when you're doing God's work. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put, his, put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Amen? Amen. Amen. Tonight I'd like to speak to you from the subject, divinely designed. Amen. 
divinely designed. You may be seated. Divinely designed. In this text, the prophet Jeremiah was called by God to speak against Israel, to warn them of the things that will happen, the destruction that was impending if they did not turn away from worshiping other gods. God is a jealous God. He does not like it when we give something else credit for who he is and for what he done. So he was really upset with Israel. And so he told Jeremiah, listen, tell them, I'm about to shut this whole thing down. I'm about to destroy this land, and I'm going to send off the Israelites to be captives of the Babylonians. So Jeremiah was like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's, that's a big task, God. You know, um, I, I'm not even a speaker. You know, I, I can't speak. Doesn't that sound familiar? Isn't that what Moses said, too? I, I can't speak, Lord. I, I, I'm not eloquent. I, I stutter. Right? I, 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 I can't say what you want me to say the way you want me to say it. I, and plus, on top of that, I'm too young. I, I can't do that. I, I need to be old. I need to be wiser. I need to have more experiences. Have you ever said that to God? Oh, I, I'm too young to do that. Oh, I, I'm too old to do that. I'm too thin to do that. I'm too fat to do that. I'm too white to do that. I'm too black to do that. What are the excuses that we give God, the master of all, the one who created us, the one that knows us from the, be from the beginning, who knew us before we were born? What excuses do we give him for not serving him and doing the things he's called us to do? God said, listen, son, do not say that you can't speak. Do not say that you're too young. You will do what I tell you to do. And you will go where I tell you to go. In fact, I'm going to put my words in your mouth so you have no excuse whatsoever. You don't even have to think about what to say because I'm going to plant it in you. You know, God does the same thing for us. Whatever it is you feel that excuse is, if God wants to use you, he will use you. <laughs> and he will give you the ability to do it. Why? Because we were divinely designed. We were created by God to serve him, to do his will. And he gives us power to do the things that he's called us to do, just like he did for Jeremiah. He gave him the power to do what he was called to do. You know, have you ever had the question, have you ever thought, why do people do what they do? Right, good or bad, why do people do what they do? Now, I did a lot of study on this question over years of time. This is something I've always wondered. Why do people do what they do? And I'm excited to tell you that God just gave me the answer a few days ago. He ended this decade-long search of why do people do what they do. And here's what he gave me. He said the answer is they do what they do based on how they see themselves. People do what they do based on how they see themselves. It's an it's a element of one's self-esteem. And I looked up self-esteem. Well, what does that mean? And according to Webster's Dictionary, it says self-esteem is a confidence and a satisfaction in yourself and in your abilities. Self-respect. And God told me that most people have a poor self-esteem. And by poor, it doesn't mean that it's just you just always think lowly of yourself. It could be the opposite. You think too highly of yourself. Right, narcissism is when you feel like you have to tear down everyone else to make yourself look better. Right, you have to trump over other people and call out names and do things and throw barbs to try to make them look bad and make yourself look good. Well, narcissism is just an extreme form of low self-esteem. Because the people that do that, they have a poor reflection. They, they think of themselves poorly, and so they feel like they got to tear everybody else down to raise themselves up. And so when you have a poor self-esteem, whether it is you think too lowly, oh, I can never do that, you know, I don't have the skills, I don't have the knowledge, you know, my luck is so terrible. You know, anybody that got luck like mine, you know, I, every, nothing never works out. It's just, it's just rough, you know. Yeah, today was hard too, just like every other day. You know, you ask them, how's your day going? Same stuff, different day. You know, I'm just making it. If I could just hold on to Friday, if I can just get there, then I'll be all right. It's sad. So most people live their life 
wishing five-sevenths of it away. Monday, you can't wait for Friday. Tuesday, can't wait for Friday. So you're wishing most of the week away, and then most people do things on the weekend that cause them to forget about what they did, so therefore, they really have a life of blurriness, of nothing, no type of anything to stand on or to represent God. And God said that is the condition that most people live in, even Christians, unfortunately. Because God said, I knew you before you was in your mother's womb. So if he knew us, if he designed us, then why are we walking around like, oh, you know, it's rough out here. It's just so hard. I, I just can't get a break. It's just, you know, every, all bad things happen to me. Why are we walking around like that? We got to understand who we are in him. Now, it doesn't mean you go the opposite direction and say, oh, yes, I'm the best in everything that I do, and my stuff doesn't stink, and you are terrible, I'm the best. It's not about that either. You want to have a healthy self-esteem in who God says you are. Understand that God is God. We are not gods. We're little gods. We're little Gs. We have power similar to him, but we're not the end-all, be-all. We weren't there when the, war, when the, the world was, was formed. Right? Job got upset at God and started questioning him. Why are you doing this, God, and why is this happening? Why is this? God said, hold up, son. <laughs> were you there when I formed the universe? Well, were you there when I separated the light from the dark? Were you there when I separated the earth from the clouds? Were you there? So you might want to get it straight when you're talking to me. So God put Job in his place and let him know, hey, I gave you some powers, but you don't have all the powers, so don't get it twisted. So we want to make sure that we are looking at ourselves properly how God says we are. So here's some of the behaviors of people that have a poor self-esteem. One of the things God says we do is we settle for less than the best. We settle. So we say, you know what, you know, I really can't do that. I don't have the skills for that job. I'll just take this one over here, you know. You know, if I just do 2,000 hours a week at McDonald's, I can take care of my house and everything. If I, just, if I just do that, I'll be good. And God will say, whoa, 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 there's nothing wrong with working there, but I, I, I designed you to be an engineer. I designed you to be a marketer. I designed you to have your own business. Why are you settling for something less than what I ordained for you? We settle for the wrong spouse. Oh, I'm getting older. <sighs> Let me just grab somebody. Yeah, you'll be all right. You calling all the time. I guess we should hook up. All right, cool. And then we get mad at God when it doesn't work out. God said, I'm sending you the perfect person. I'm sending you your Boaz. I'm sending you the one that I've ordained to be with you. So you might have to wait a little bit while I continue forming that person to be the one for you. But we settle because we see ourselves as, well, I can't do any better. Let me just go ahead and do that. We may start a business or start different things and we become professional starters but we never finish anything. Pastor talked about this on Sunday. Start everything, but finish nothing. We become professional quitters. We have a great idea. God gives you an idea. like, good, okay, good. I'm going to run with it. I'm going to start this business. I'm going to do this thing. And then it gets a little hard. Well, you know. I'm going to do this other thing over here. Let me do this thing over here, right here. This is the one right here. This is the right church. This is the right pastor. This is the right business. This is the right job. Oh, they hurt my feelings. Well, I'm going to go over here and do this other thing. And so we never finish anything. But yet God designed us. But we don't believe enough in him to see it through. Whatever we start, we should finish. Right? If we stand before that person, before the pastor, I'm going I'm to I'm give my all to this person forever and ever. For better and for worse. Then we might want to do that. And I know it seems hard, right? It's like things go crazy, and it's like, well, uh, but maybe we need to talk to God and like find out what his plans are. Find out how we should handle that situation versus being so quick, like, you know what, forget it. Forget it. Forget it. We quit so many things because we don't have the belief in God and who we are to be able to see things through. He wants us to be different from the world. He said, I'm looking for a peculiar people set apart and I've sanctified you to do something. He wants us to do it. Let's do whatever we say. If we say it, let's do it. When we have poor self-esteem, a lot of times that 
will cause us to get into criminal behavior. Right? If you don't think highly of yourself, or you think too highly of yourself, either way, then you say, you know what, well, that person has something that I want, I'm going to take theirs then. Because I'm better, they're worse, you know, they're just a pawn to me, I'm going to just go ahead and take it. And so we end up in criminal behavior, we end up getting locked up, we have all kinds of issues because we don't see ourselves the way God sees us. If we saw ourselves the way God sees us, then we would know <laughs> that behavior is beneath our privilege. Right? We are the son of a king, the daughter of a king. So if we are the king's kids, we don't have to rob and steal and pillage and covet our neighbor's spouse and wife and all that. We don't have to do any of that kind of stuff because we're the king's kids. We just tell our daddy what we want, and then he'll make that thing work out. Right? We're the king's kids. So we got to walk in that and be that in all that we do. If it keeps going... Eventually, it lends, it lends itself to suicidal tendencies. Because like, you know what? This is not working out. It'd be better if I wasn't here. And then we have these thoughts about just ending it all. Because we don't realize that God said we were divinely designed to serve a purpose. That he knew us before we were in our mother's womb. So if he knew us, if he created us with power and passion and ideas and insights, then who are we to say, you know what? It ain't worth it. I'm going to cancel it and quit again. This time I'll make a permanent quit. I'm going to quit on my life. We got to reprogram ourselves to look at how God says we are, and then we be that. We live that. And a lot of times what happens, you'll have great ideas. God will give you ideas. And then through a, a, a series of events, we get beat up in life. We go through disappointment after disappointment. So after a while, we say, you know what, yeah, it's just, you know, it ain't going to work out for me. It works out for other people, but not for me. You know, people like me don't, don't really do well in this. My family has never been successful in this type of thing. My people have never been successful in this. So let me just go do something else. Let me quit. Because we get beat up. So we have these lost hopes and dreams. I want you to think back to when you were a child. Think back to when you were really young. And you had an idea of what it is you wanted to do or be or have when you grew up. Think about that thing. The question is, are you doing that which you wanted to do back then? And God told me that most people aren't. Right? You may have had a desire to be an engineer, to be a lawyer, to be a doctor, and then somebody, maybe somebody you respected, told you that was impossible for you. You can't do that. You're not smart enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not enough to do that thing. And because that person who you put a lot of respect in, because they shattered your dreams, you say, you know what, yeah, you're right. They know better than I do. Let me not do that. And so you end up, years later, working some dead-end job, frustrated, hating it. He's like, well, I got to do this to pay the bills. So I'll just ride this thing out for the next 40 years till I retire, and then I might be happy then, hopefully. Maybe as a child, you had a, a big dream. So, you know, you wanted, to, you wanted to be rich. You wanted to have that mansion on a private island, you know, driving that Lamborghini. He's right? like, that's what I want. And then through life, you get beat up, you get told what you can't do, what you can't have, this, that, and the other. And then you find yourself years later settling for an apartment that's close to the job and maybe a Honda with some insurance. Now, there's nothing wrong with an apartment, nothing wrong with a Honda. Of course not. The question is, was that the, was that the vision that God gave for you? Right? This message is not a materialistic message. It doesn't, doesn't matter what the material is. The question is, what was the dream that God planted in you? And are you pursuing that dream? Or have you given it up? I'm hoping to wake somebody up today. There's somebody that still has a dream in your heart right now. And as I'm speaking, it's burning inside. You feel the flicker and you're like, yeah, that's me. I, I got to do something different. I, I have been sitting back. I have been playing it safe. I have been settling for less than what I want. God is saying, I've designed you to be great. I've designed you to be more and have more. I've designed you to be a prophet 
to the nations. I've designed you to speak to other people and encourage them and do the things that I've told you to do because that's going to make everybody live a better life. I've designed you for that. In fact, let me give you three words you want to write down. Write down these three words. Write down design, desire, and destiny. Design, desire, and destiny. So here's how it works. The design of a thing determines its desire. And its desire determines its destiny. The design of a thing determines its desire, and its desire determines its destiny. So let me give you an example. A lion was designed with what type of claws? Sharp, right? Big, sharp claws. And the lion has a desire to do what? To kill, to hunt. So its destiny is to be a supreme hunter. It was designed for it, it has the claws for it, it has a desire for it, so its destiny is to do that which it was desired, designed and has a desire to do. An eagle, an eagle was designed with what type of wings? Large, expansive wings, right? Huge wingspan, like eight, 10 feet, something tremendous, right? And now it has a desire to do what? To, to fly, and to fly how? High, to soar, as a desire to soar. So it was designed with big wings and as a desire to soar. So its destiny is to soar high and see things that other animals can't see. Right? The, the eagle is quite different than a chicken. The chicken will never see what the eagle sees. And then if the eagle tries to get down to the ground with the chicken, it's very awkward. It, it, it can't walk right. It, it, it doesn't know how to do that because it wasn't designed to walk. It was designed to soar. And if a chicken tries to fly like the eagle, it would get off the ground a few feet maybe, but it was not going to go to the same heights because it was designed differently. Do you realize that you were designed to be an eagle? You were designed to soar. You are the children of a king. So as a king, as the, the, the king's kids, you want to spread your wings and go as big and as far and as fast as you can. Because God says, I got your back. Don't worry about the people that say you can't do it. Don't worry about their faces. Right? They, yeah, people will frown. They say, who you think you are? You think you sharp? You think you this? And you yeah, nothing. I know your family. I know your spouse. I know whatever. You just let them be chickens and you go sore. Don't worry about what the chickens think. The eagle couldn't care less what the chickens are saying on the ground. <laughs> it has no time for the chickens, but right? it's designed to soar high and see things that a chicken will never see. And you'll notice, yeah, you might be uncomfortable at the job. You might be uncomfortable in certain relationships because you're not where you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be high on that mountain, soaring, looking down, and seeing the expansive goodness that God has created. But when you're stuck there in that seat and it don't fit, and you constantly try to flap your wings, and everyone says, don't flap your wings, don't, don't, don't move your wings. No, here we don't do that. No, we, we stand and we just walk and we just do this. You're like, what is this? Because you was not designed for that. Step into your design. See, your design determines your desire, and your desire determines your destiny. So if you have a desire to be more, that is your destiny. You were divinely designed by God himself. And now it's not about being somebody else either, because you were born an original, don't die a copy. You were born an original, do not die a copy. God gave you certain gifts and talents that he did not give somebody else. Right? So don't try to be that other person. You want to be you and spread your wings the way God told you to spread them. And then you will see the things that God wants you to see. Amen. Your design determines your desire. Your desire determines your destiny. So the question is, what do you want? What do you want? 
God says you can have anything that you want. In fact, turn with me in your Bible to Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. It says, so God made man in his own image. And in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God says, look, I created you in my own image. I'm giving you powers to subdue the earth, to have dominion over it. It didn't say, my Bible doesn't say, um, don't be fruitful, just like relax and don't do too much. Just, just play safe. Don't multiply, like just add, just do a little bit more, but don't multiply. That's not what my Bible says. Maybe your version might be a little different, but my version says be fruitful and multiply and subdue it, not be subdued by it, to subdue it, to take over it, to rule it, to control it, to have dominion. So it's time for us to be that and have that. And everything that we do, bring that to the table. Bring your birthright. Christ told me, God told me that many Christians are living beneath their privilege. Right? We're, we're acting like the world because we believe that we forget that we serve God and that God created us. So we, we fall off into these humanistic teachings about how, you know, we have to depend on ourselves. And if we just believe hard enough in ourselves and our abilities, then we can do things. Well, what if you what if you believe only in you and you fail you? Now what? We end up in a corner slitting our wrist somewhere. Because we failed ourselves and all of our power was in us. That's why it serves us to believe that there's someone other than us. That's controlling our lives. Because then the word says, take no thought for your life. Right? Give it to God. Let him guide you and all will be well. All things work together for the good for them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. But we got to believe that there is a God or else it's going to be hard for us to believe in something other than ourselves. We don't want to depend on just us. Now don't turn here, but what, 1 Corinthians 2.9 is my favorite scripture. And it says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. And no mind has even imagined what God has prepared for them that love him. Amen. God says, I got something big for you. I know what you, what you, what you dream about. Your dream might be, might be, you might think is big. He said, whatever you got for yourself, <laughs> my ideas and my thoughts for you are even bigger than what you have for yourself. You haven't even imagined what I have for you. You have no clue as to how I'm going to hook you up if you just listen to me and follow me and do what I tell you to do. Oh, come on, man. I'm a big dreamer. You say you got something bigger than I got? God, man, I'm excited. Show me. Tell me what to do, what to say, where to walk, how to talk, and I will do that because I want what you say. Now, forget Jamie. I want God. Do it. I want to do whatever you say, Father. Oh, my goodness. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. So when you have that thought that's saying, oh, something's bad is about to happen. I'm not going to make this and I'm not going to pass this test. And, you know, this person's probably going to leave me. All this negative stuff, that's not coming from God. Amen. God says, I have plans for you that are good, not of disaster. They're good. They, he wants us to prosper. We have been divinely designed to prosper. And here's the thing. If you pay attention, you will notice that God gives you previews of what is to come. If you pay attention, God will give you previews of what is to come. What do I mean by that? Both Moses and David started their ministry as shepherds. Both Moses and David started as shepherds. They were shepherds first of sheep before they ever became shepherds of people. God will use your past to bless your future. Sometimes we get discouraged and so, say, you know, well, this is just a menial job. This is just a, you know, my business is not growing where I want it to, and it's not going to where I want it to go. God is saying, listen, if you master the small things, I'll make you ruler over many. So we want to prosper where we're planted. 
Whatever it is that you do now, do that thing to the best of your ability. And God will elevate you on a whole other level. You want to elevate yourself, God will elevate you. Because he wants you to be more and have more. He wants you to be a bigger blessing. Because the more he blesses you, the more you can bless other people. Well, you can only give what you have. So God wants us to do more and be more. And let's, this will be our last turn. Go to 1 Samuel 17, 34. 1 Samuel 17, 34. I think this just brings it all together right here. I'll go to 37. It says, but David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from his mouth. And when it rose against me, I caught it by his beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will also deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. David is saying, listen, all the things that have happened to me in the past have prepared me for this time right now. All the things that have happened to you in the past, friends, have prepared you for this moment in time right now. And when you go through those things, it seems like, oh, it's rough, it's terrible. I'm sure David wasn't excited about being attacked by a lion or being attacked by a bear. But he said, man, because God delivered me from those situations, I know he will deliver me from this one. So let me add him, Saul, I'm going to take Goliath out and kill him just like I killed the lion, just like I killed the bear. So friends, it's time for us to kill some Goliaths. The things you've been through have prepared you for it. So step into that power. Don't run away from the Goliath. Jump in with your stones and swing them and bust them in the head. God wants us to take it by force. He wants us to be aggressive about the things that he's called us to do. Because when we walk in his power, we are a reflection of, to other people of how good God is. Do you realize that our lives is the only Bible that some people will ever read? So we want to live it in such a way where people want to follow God. And here's the thing. I mean, there's so much I want to tell you about this right here. If you look at our last uh, verse, J Jeremiah 1.10, he says, you know, see, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Right. So the question is, are we destroying those negative thoughts? Are we destroying that poor self-esteem? the way we feel about ourselves? Are we destroying those things and are we planting in us what God says? See, my Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My Bible says that by his stripes I was healed. I mean, it's already passed, it's already happened. By his stripes we were healed. My Bible says that God wants me to be more than a conqueror. That he's designed me to be divine. He's, he's given me the perfect situation, the perfect shape, so that I can do what God has called me to do. You know, your Bible says the same thing about you. It ain't about Jeremiah. It ain't about Jamie. It's about you. God is no respecter of persons. So what he does for one, he will do for all if we just reach out and touch him. Stand to your feet. Let's give God some praise. Just, just let him know how awesome he is. Let him know how you feel about him. Let him know what he's done for you. Let him know the things that you have for yourself if you know it's not as good as what God has for you. Think about the times when he spared you from that danger. He spared you from that accident. He spares you from that illness. He recovered you. He, re he restored the things that were stolen from you. Think about those things and thank him for that. Oh, God is an amazing God. I don't know if you know him the way I do. I'm telling you, God is amazing. I should not be here today. I never thought I would be a preacher. I never thought I'd be standing and giving the, the praise of God. Never, ever, 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 ever. Never thought about it. But what God, God says, my plans are higher than your plans. My ways are higher than your ways. And all we got to do is embrace what he said about us and have that be our self-esteem. And then we will do great exploits. Christ said, the things you've seen me do, you will do even greater. But we have to believe that and hold on to it, and then we shall have it. That's what it's all about. Listen, here's the thing. If you don't know Christ, 
for yourself and you really would like to have him as your Lord and Savior, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. We would love to invite you into the family and show you how to live the way God has designed you to live. If you don't know Christ, you want to know him, just raise your hand. For those of you that would like, maybe you know God. Maybe you know Christ. He's already your Lord and Savior. But you want to learn like, some of the deeper things of him. You want to find out, like, what's this thing about speaking in tongues? and uh, what, What's that all about? You want to find out more information about that, just raise your hand. That is a free gift, just like salvation. It's a free gift. And when we accept it, man, all kinds of things can happen. Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Those of you who would like to be a, a member of Striving for Perfection Ministries, that is what we do here. We strive for perfection. We're definitely not perfect. Christ said, I came not for the world, but for the sick. So, yes, we are sick here as well, but we strive to be better. Pastor Larry Bolden would love to be your pastor. If you'd like to join Striving and be a part of this family, just raise your hand as well. Just raise your hand. And at this time, the altar is open. If you want to come forth and, and pray for yourself or have one of our ministers pray with you to touch and agree with the things that's on your heart, go ahead and do so now. <laughs>